so yeah, the pains of growing. Uh, yeah, you know, there's a line in the 12 and 12. It talks about uh, the, the pains of drinking had to come before sobriety. And then the inner turmoil before serenity. And that's uh, those big, big things, you know. Yeah, the pains of, of me destroying my life. Getting to a point where where my pride and my fear of of coming out as an alcoholic or addict or admitting it or whatever the fear was that kept me from coming to the rooms. You know, I had a pretty decent life. I built up a decent kind of life from the outside. And uh, I systematically destroyed it because I was powerless over, over my substance and and I couldn't stop. And I ended up, uh, you know, making my family homeless. I lost our house that we'd paid the mortgage on for 10 years. Um, I lost my business that I built for 15 years. And I lost my, my family. And I uh, ended up losing, you know, most importantly, myself. Of course, you know, not to disregard my family's importance. But through the process of burning it down, I lost who I was whatever version of that at that time you know a lot of it was built on ego and uh you know my self-esteem was built on things that i thought held me up from the outside of me so when i had burnt down the things that held me up from the outside i ended up being sitting in the pile of rubble of what i thought my life was wondering who the fuck i was and as I'm sitting in this pile of rubble wondering who the fuck I was, I finally was able to finally go into a room that I had so desperately wanted to come into years and years before, but the fear and the pride would not allow me to step in the door. And uh, so, yeah, and then I started my journey of, uh, you know, of, of the inner turmoil pain. You know, I had to look at my past. I had to look at all these things. I had to look at the truth about who I was. And the truth about who I was wasn't the truth that I thought I had always been. And then the nice thing about that was, though, I didn't have to keep being who I was anymore. I had the I had a opportunity to change. And I didn't really understand that if this thing would work or, or it wouldn't work. But I actually had no choice in the book. It talks about... As we became alcoholic, crushed by a self-imposed crisis, we could no longer postpone or evade. I tried to postpone and evade this self-imposed crisis for years, and I couldn't postpone or evade it anymore. I had to fearlessly face the proposition that either this God thing was everything or he is nothing, but I had no choice, so I just said, yeah. You know, it says, confronted with this question of faith, yeah, I'm finally confronted with this question of God or faith or whatever it is. And and I and I had no choice. You know, if I had another fucking door to try again or a new door, I probably would have. But I had no choice. So I conceded. I surrendered. And the surrendering was humiliating. Like surrendering to me finally walking into a room was, was painful and humiliating. And then step two, surrendering to this God that I had no idea that I always balked at, but I had no choice, like I said, so the humiliation of surrendering to something and then turning my will and my life over to it in step three was very humiliating and humbling too. Because one of my mottos in life was knowledge is power. The more you know, the more you're worth. And then I began the journey. And without a personality change, I'm fucked. So I, I dug into that step six work and I and I tried with a will and it's actually carried out in step 10. That step six work is carried out in step 10. And, and uh, you know, I look at my life today and yeah, I don't have, you know, all of those material blessings, but at least I know inside that I'm full. I know that I know that that hole that I kept trying to fill from things outside of me is full with, with the God that I found in Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't look at the, the things that happened in my past as detriments anymore. I look at those were parts of my journey so I could find what I was always looking for. The peace that I found through the God that I found 
has filled the hole within me. And I was born without that, and I found it at Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, I'm, I'm glad that God helped me burn my life to the ground. He knew what I needed. All the pain that I've felt and all the pain that I've been through and all the trials and tribulations that I've fought through with the help of God since I've been here, every single one of them has been worth it. There's been nothing that hasn't been worth it. But at the time when I'm living it, it seems like it's the worst thing ever. And it's never going to fucking end. And am I ever going to feel good? And that's alcoholism. Um, I just got off the phone with a guy. He's a 35-year member. And he just called me out of the blue the other day. But it's when you're living in God's realm, this isn't out of the blue. So I called him back today because I didn't let him go yesterday. And, and I, he's never called me before. And I know this guy. He's always good for a mind fuck, right? But he just called me out of the blue. But it's not out of the blue. So we got to chatting today. And he showed me some truths about, you know, rigorous honesty about myself. Because I will rationalize and justify shit. To suit my actions or inaction. I would try to intellectualize anything. And not even always intentionally. That's why rigorous means accurate. This man helped me get accurate with some honesty. That I had no idea that I wasn't able to see. Because you can't see self when you're in self. You can't see the problem when you are the problem. And it's not like I was causing anyone pain or, or doing anything bad. But I hadn't seen the truth in a relationship that I'd been in for two and a half years that ended four months ago. And he helped me see the truth in that. And he told me to stop fucking blaming myself. He told me to go to step 11 and start saying the prayer with a total different mindset that I hadn't been able to see. And like, you know, that's a gift. So as soon as this meeting's over, man, I'm lighting the candle. I'm pulling out the step 11 prayer. I'm going into some serious meditation and prayer because I need to heal what's wrong. The thing about the program is you can't heal what's wrong until you stay sober long enough. The first set of steps only relieves you from, from a small part of what the actual problem is. But the, the thing about staying sober is more is revealed. It drives me closer to God. A God that I fucking did not give a fuck about when I got here. I just got here because I was sick and tired of being miserable and I had nowhere else to go. But I'm so grateful that I've been here. And I'm able to have the tools and build the fortitude to deal with the, the life that comes at me. And that is part of the meaning of life. Is to be able to contend with it. The only, the only guarantee or security I have in the life. Like I always look for security. But the only real security that I have is my ability to contend with it, if I'm willing to, to contend with it. That's the only real security I have in my life. So I contend with life on God's terms. It's not life on life terms for me. It's life on God's terms. Because if it's not life on God's terms, then it's life on Bill's terms. And I know what the fuck happens when Bill's involved. So step 10 is the keys to the kingdom. Step 6 and step 7 worked in my step 10 are the keys to the kingdom. I am a huge believer that my defects don't stay with me for the rest of my life. I think my defects can be worked on and can be rid of. And I can work within God's realm if I'm really willing to fucking change. But it takes time and it takes work and it takes commitment, it takes persistence. And it takes sometimes hanging on with your fucking fingernails. But to go the other way to me is not an option. So I do whatever the fuck it takes today to, to stay on the path with God. And God's amazing in my life. And so if you're new or you're struggling, or you're coming back, you know, get through your first set of steps and, and dig in like your life depends on it. This flimsy read, this little bit of hope will f turn out to be the powerful, loving hand of God. It's, what it's what's happened in my life. So, you know, I just love all you all for being here and having the meeting. And thanks for asking me to share and listening to me for 10